What's up software developers and folks interested in DevOps? We are in part two of this series now where we will be taking our next JS application with Tailwind and TypeScript and getting it deployed on different platforms. Uh, for this video, we will be deploying it to Vercel, which is always my go-to for deploying next JS applications, simply because Vercel is made by the same core team behind Next.js. So it's a pretty seamless experience for just kind of like a one or two click deployment. Um, I have made some code changes if you're following along with our repo since we last saw it. I did change up the data structure a little bit. So instead of just sending up bare strings as a response, I do have objects representing each deployment platform with booleans representing if we have done the deployment on that platform or not. And so I just made a commit marking Vercel as complete because we are about to deploy that. And we have some conditional rendering. We've got a ternary evaluating the color. So um, if an individual platform is complete, we are returning a class of text green 500 Otherwise, we'll just return kind of our default of text indigo 500 until, you know, we've marked every deployment as complete. So just to see that quick little uh, visual change here, here we are. This is uh, us having Vercel marked as ready. So let's go ahead and get this up and running. This will be pretty short just because it's a pretty seamless process. I will have a few extra steps that you won't have to do since this is an organization repo and you likely will be just doing your own personal stuff. But uh, when you launch Vercel, you know, you'll come to your dashboard and hit add new project. And from there, um, you'll have to authorize your GitHub account if you haven't done so yet. But if you have your personal uh, project you'll be able to click that and do import and it'll pull up your build settings it'll guess that it's a next.js application it's it's really really good at um, guessing which type of application you want to deploy and configure default deployment settings for that I have one extra step that I think I will have to do since I'm deploying from an organization I have to create a team name yeah I think for that so We'll call this um, deployment crew. <laughs> or, yeah, we'll go with that. Kind of lame and goofy, but uh, you will not have to do this step if you are um, just doing a personal project. So just because I'm working in an organization repo, I have to do that. But otherwise, you'll click import and you'll go straight to this configure project section. Now, like I said, uh, Vercel is phenomenal at picking up and understanding what deployment uh, platform, or sorry, what, what framework you're trying to deploy. So it's not just for Next.js. You can use this for a whole lot of stuff. In fact, they've got default settings for Create React App. They've got Gatsby. They've got Angular. They've got Svelte. They've got Vue. So you've got a whole lot of options available to you. And if you're working on a project that otherwise isn't one of these presets, you can go to Other and define your own build settings and everything. So they, they are just really, really good at picking up on that. And even if you don't use Next.js, Vercel is still going to be a phenomenal deployment platform for you. Um, since this is a Next.js project, all I need to do is click Deploy and it's going to go ahead and <laughs> build the project for me uh, very seamlessly. So I did have that one extra step, but if you are just working on your own personal project and you already have authorized your uh, GitHub account, uh, you've already let Vercel connect through it, then you'll just click import to get your repo imported and then you will click build or deploy and uh, it gets started. And it's really, really quick. Um, I mean, just like that. We, we, we even got that little confetti like showing us, you know, hey, great job, Vercel, you know, you, you did it. 
under the dashboard for an individual project. You can do lots of configurations. Uh, you can view the build logs to make sure everything went okay. You can view function logs to see your you know, live running console logs. And if you want to configure your domains, you can do just that under this view domain section. Otherwise, they give you a couple, you know, production URLs. One is going to be, you know, your repo name with some long hash. And otherwise, if it's unique across Vercel, which I happen to get lucky with deploy this, I get, you know, my repo name dot Vercel dot app, which, you know, it's pretty fancy. Uh, uh, I got such a, you know, shortened URL. But yeah, there we go. We have deploythis.vercel.app and my other really long uh, URL. Oh, I think it's actually loading up the uh, app thing. I clicked the wrong button. Let's see. But yeah, if you wanted to view your domains. Okay, never mind. No, I didn't get the long hash. I just have the uh, r unique um, name. So that's great for me. Now, if you wanted to point to a specific um, branch or a domain name of your own, I think you can go to the advanced. No. Let's see. Custom subdomains. Domain domain. Oh, you could come down here. So, like, if I had a subdomain like um, deployment .atlc .io, I would get some records. I think I would have to add. Yeah. So I'd get some C name records, and I could go to my, um, you know, host of choice. I actually have my personal server running on a digital ocean and that handles all of my name server stuff. So all I would have to do is add this CNAME record there and uh, have it point towards over here. And then I could have that nice little nifty custom domain uh, pointing towards this application. So super, super quick, super seamless. Um, and I, I really haven't explored, you know, Vercel too terribly much outside of just a quick deployment platform for my Next.js applications and for, you know, creating subdomains on my main primary site that point to these apps. But um, it's still a, a really phenomenal, uh, rich platform. And a beautiful part is that it is a free um, tier, I believe. I, I don't think I have any limitation. Um, except for like constraints on probably server size. So yeah, I, I have these full stack applications running uh, without, you know, any limitations like Heroku, which if you haven't visited your site in like 15 or 30 minutes, it's going to suspend it. And then when you next revisit the site, it has to rebuild the dyno. And so that's going to take like, 30 or so seconds to reboot your site, but no, it's with Vercel. Uh, all of my sites are online, you know, 24 seven. I don't think there's like a build minute limitation. So you can just continuously redeploy and not have to deal with the hassle of running out of build minutes and not being able to continue deploying everything. So it's a really, really nice um, application uh, deployment platform. So I, I really do enjoy deploying with Vercel, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing just kind of the quick nature of Vercel and how seamlessly it works with the Next.js application. Even with me having to go through a couple extra steps for an organization, it was still like four clicks total. So for hobbyist projects, it's like one or two or three. So uh, really, really enjoy it. But I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see some more deployments, go ahead and like and subscribe so that you'll get notifications whenever the next video in the series comes out so we can see what it's like to deploy this application on Heroku or maybe AWS or DigitalOcean or Azure. So I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.